In everyday life, numerous types of particles have charges, from ordinary table salt to cancer medicines and explosives. Understanding how charges are distributed within molecules can help us better understand their structure and reactivity, and the simplest way to look at charge distribution is something called formal charges. Hi, and welcome to Ket's Book, a channel that strives to make science concepts easy to understand and apply. The formal charge of an atom is its actual charge if all of its bonds were perfectly ionic or covalent. But of course, most bonds are not perfectly ionic or covalent, so the actual charge of an atom often differs from its formal charge a little, but the formal charge is a good place to start. Formal charges of an atom can be calculated by subtracting the number of valence electrons a single atom has minus the number of valence electrons it has in a Lewis structure if we break all the bonds homolytically. Homolytic bond breaking simply means that the electrons of a bond are divided equally between the two atoms. Let's see how this works for water, which has the following structure. If we break the bonds homolytically, we take the two electrons from this bond and give one to hydrogen and one to oxygen. We do the same to the other bond and end up with electrons distributed like this. Hydrogen normally has one valence electron, and it has one valence electron in water, so its formal charge is 1 minus 1, which is 0. This is true for both hydrogens in this structure. An oxygen atom has six valence electrons, and in the Lewis structure of water, it has six valence electrons, so its formal charge is 6 minus 6, which is also 0. Now, in my next example, I want to save time by not erasing the bonds and writing dots. Instead, notice that each bond always gives one electron to each atom. So the number of electrons an atom formally has in a Lewis structure is equal to the number of bonds plus the number of non-bonding electrons. Carbon monoxide is a colorless, odorless, highly toxic gas with the following structure. We know that single carbon atoms have four valence electrons, but in this Lewis structure of carbon monoxide, carbon has one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. Remember that we are counting one valence electron for each bond and one valence electron for each dot. That means that carbon has a formal charge of four minus five or negative one. We can do the same thing for oxygen, which has six valence electrons as an atom. In carbon monoxide, however, it has one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. So oxygen's formal charge is six minus five, which is positive one. These formal charges tell us that carbon monoxide is a polar molecule with carbon as the negative end and oxygen as the positive end, even though oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. In fact, because the formal charges and electronegativities have opposite polarities, the dipole moment of carbon monoxide is rather small, with carbon as the negative end, which means that in this case, formal charge is actually more important than electronegativity in determining the polarity of a molecule. Also, please note that the sum of all the formal charges always equals the charge of the particle. In this case, the formal charges add up to zero, which is exactly what we would expect for a neutral molecule. Now, for you Breaking Bad fans out there, do you remember what chemical Walt used to blow up Tuco's place? Fulminated mercury. A little tweak of chemistry. Fulminated mercury is a compound of mercury-2 and the polyatomic ion fulminate, which has the following structure. Before I tell you the formal charge of every atom, pause the video and try to figure it out for yourself. Okay, now let's see if you got them all correct. First, how many valence electrons do they have as atoms? Carbon has four, nitrogen has five, and oxygen has six. Next, let's count the valence electrons in the structure. Carbon has one, two, three, four, five valence electrons. Nitrogen has one, two, three, four valence electrons. And oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven valence electrons. Last, we subtract these to calculate the formal charge, which is negative 1 for carbon, positive 1 for nitrogen, and negative 1 for oxygen. Once again, notice that if we add all the formal charges together, the total is the charge of the polyatomic ion, so fulminate has a negative 1 charge. Another interesting polyatomic ion to look at is sulfate. 
on the internet, most searches would have you believe that the Lewis structure of sulfate is this. However, that is not the correct structure. Several studies using high-level calculations have demonstrated that sulfate and other similar structures do not have an expanded octet, so sulfur should not have six bonds. Instead, the best Lewis structure is this. Pause the video and try to determine the formal charges of the atoms in sulfate. Notice that all the oxygens are identical. As an atom, sulfur has six valence electrons, but in sulfate it has only four, one from each single bond. So the formal charge is six minus four, which is positive two. Oxygen also has six valence electrons, but in sulfate it has seven, giving it a negative one formal charge. Each of the oxygens in sulfate has a negative one charge, making the total charge of the polyatomic ion negative two. Now, just for fun, let's consider the incorrect structure on the left. Pause the video and see if you can figure out the formal charges in it. Because of the double bonds, the sulfur and the top and bottom oxygens have formal charges of zero. The other oxygens still each have a negative one formal charge. At first glance, it may seem preferable to minimize the formal charges, which is often the case. However, it is more important not to give a main group atom more than eight valence electrons, which is why in this case, the sulfur has an actual charge of positive 1.77. The actual charge is slightly less than two due to inductive effects. Last of all, let's look at a really big molecule like the cancer medicine venetoclax. How can we quickly determine the formal charges in something this complicated? First of all, notice that none of the lone pairs are typically shown for large molecules. It is assumed that all atoms have the necessary lone pairs to give them full octets, and lone pairs are only shown for non-octet atoms like carbenes and radicals like tempo. So we can determine the formal charges based on the number of bonds they have. Carbon typically makes four bonds, nitrogen makes three bonds, oxygen and sulfur make two bonds, and chlorine makes one bond. If an atom has an extra bond, it will have a positive charge, and if an atom has fewer than normal bonds, it will have a negative charge. The magnitude of the charge is equal to the number of extra or fewer bonds it has. A quick glance at the molecule shows us that most of the atoms have zero formal charge, but these oxygens have a negative formal charge because they have only one bond each. Likewise, this nitrogen has a positive formal charge because it has one extra bond, and this sulfur has a positive two charge because it has two extra bonds. All right, thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please like, subscribe, or check me out at ketsbook.com. If you have any questions or comments, be sure to share them below and have a wonderful day.